Hey, I want to um, acknowledge a couple things uh, just uh, in our family uh, here at Waymaker Church. Uh, first, Zach and Alinka Buckle to have their second child this week, <laughs> Lucas. So many of you know Zach. Uh, Zach uh, led our student ministries for uh, six years, uh, just passed the mantle uh, to Peter Johnson, who uh, went from Way Kids director, now he is family director and students. Uh, shout out to Way Youth, yeah. So uh, the other thing is this, and I just want you to remember uh, Tim and Chrissy Howe uh, uh, today. Uh, some of you were tuning in uh, to Noonday uh, Prayer uh, Friday, and you, you know that uh, Tim lost his father just suddenly uh, this past week, uh, and, and just, man, when, when people in our church grieve over loss, we just want to grieve with them, and so right now, I just want you to uh, just bow your heads right now and just, just pray right where you are. Uh, even if you walked in here and you're like, man, I'm new to church, I'm new to this place, I don't, I don't even know if I believe in God, just make this a time right now where you can just open yourself up to, to the Lord uh, in prayer for someone. And so right now, just let's, let's fill the room with just prayer for the Howe family. Uh, Dave and Paige uh, were a part of this church for, for many years. Uh, they, uh, Tim and him are brothers. Uh, they have a brother also named Mike and a sister named Beth, a brother-in-law named Ben. I just want you to just call them by name right now. Just remember their mother right now as she's grieving uh, just, just pray for them. Just fill the room right now with just prayer of interceding for them as they grieve. And I know that there are people here who've also suffered that that we don't know about, uh, that if you just, in that same breath, just start praying for people in our church right now who've lost loved ones in this past season. Uh, we know this is just a, a strange time in the world. So um, be the family right now and just pray for them. Father, I just pray. First of all, I just thank you for new life. And uh, I know Zach and Alinka, I know their story and their journey. And for years, they wanted to, to have children. And now you've given them two. And it's just such a beautiful miracle. Um, and so I just I thank you for that. And I just pray favor and blessing over them. Also, Lord, the Howell family, uh, just be with them. Let us be uh, ministers to them. Uh, let us know what to say and what not to say, when to be with them when to sit with them, uh, when, when God to, uh, to minister to them and how to minister them. Just, just lead us by your spirit. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Turn with me to the book of Acts chapter two. Uh, the book of Acts chapter two. Uh, we're talking about family. Uh, this is the year of family at Waymaker Church. Uh, we're talking about specifically the family of God, but also specifically uh, the family unit. So, so both of those in, in concert with one another. And what has God modeled for us and what has he given us to be both the family of God, but also to be households of God, to have marriages and to raise children in the context of a spirit-led, gospel-driven family and also be a part of a spiritual family that is together with our family spreading the good news of Jesus to our neighbors and to the nation. What is that? What do we, well, first of all, we have to f- have a foundation of who, fa- who our father is, that he wants us to know that he is building an eternal family, and he has been from the beginning, and the church is a part of that, that we are presently the family of God in this reality and we are to invite other people into the eternal family of God. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died on a cross. That's why he resurrected from the dead. That's why he ascended into heaven and that's why he commissioned his church. And we're gonna look at that today. So we have to understand that our father in heaven is building a family. But Tanner taught us uh, a couple weeks ago what our father is like, that he is patient, that he is gracious, that he's merciful, that he's just. That, that if we think about who God is and his name and who he is, he is in his essence love. He is love. He is, as we describe the fruit of the spirit, he is that spirit, he is that character. Love 
joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and self control. You say, how can God be self control? The reason he can be self control is he, in his, even in his justice and anger, is patient. Wow. Mm. So, what does he do? He does for us what we cannot do for ourselves, and he sends us his son, a perfect atoning sacrifice, but not just that, but lives a perfect human life to show us the character of God in human form. He is both the, he is the invitation, but he is also the illumination and the illustration of God's heart. We looked at that last week, that Jesus is that. Now, these things that we're talking about are foundations of a faith in Jesus Christ. While we are talking about it in this room, we are also talking about it in Way Kids uh, and in Midway and in uh, Way Youth. So everybody this year, as we've launched into a new year, are talking about what is the foundation, what do we have to know, what do we have to think, what do we have to feel, how do we need to act in this faith that is what we call in the modern day Christianity. What is it and what is it not? Well, to understand that, we have to understand these elements that we're talking about. Today, I want to talk about the power, the power. So look with me at verse 1 of Acts chapter 2. It's 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus said something in in Acts chapter 1. He said, hey, uh, I'm going to make you my witnesses and I'm going to give you power. Okay, and and this power is going to cause you to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, right? And then all of a sudden, we are introduced to this power. It says, verse 1, when the day of Pentecost arrived, this is a Jewish holiday, holy day, when it arrived, they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Do, do any of you remember the derecho in, in 2012? I, I remember, I, we, we were sitting in my living room and we were watching uh, River Monsters. Anybody remember this show? Okay, yes. All right, Phil. Phil remembers this show. Uh, it, it, okay, it's on Discovery. Check it out. And it was kind of, it's kind of scary because it's all about these man-eating fish and this guy who goes out to catch them. And so uh, my kids were young at the time and we were watching uh, River Monsters and then all of a sudden the derecho happens right outside. So you've got this creepy show that we're watching about man-eating fish and the power goes out. Whew. kids, the river monsters are coming to get us. <laughs> I didn't say that. I wanted to. That would have been so epic as a father, though, wouldn't it? Yes, yes. But if you remember the derecho, it, it just came upon us suddenly. Like, there was no rain. It's hurricane force winds without the precipitation. It's, it's a phenomenon, right? And it, and it was the first one that I have ever been, been a part of. Uh, but, but it just blew through and blew down trees and, and, and even buildings. I want you to think about that because that is kind of what this mighty rushing wind was coming through the window and into that room that day. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared on them and rested on each of them. Fire. Fire. Some of you know this, but our church, literally, the roof was on fire last week. Some of you saw this in the news. The roof, the roof, the roof was on fire. Come on. <laughs> never mind. Anyway, all right. So, like, just get, get on with it. Get on with it, Pastor John. Yeah, one of our HVAC units caught on fire. And, and you know, we're just like, okay, wow, revival's already started breaking out, right? The fire is, is here. So when we think of the introduction to the Holy Spirit, it is a mighty wind and fire. Now, 
Is that always how it manifests? No. No, it, it is limitless in how it manifests. But I'll tell you this. The Holy Spirit is always going to point to one thing. Okay, and we're gonna get to that in just a second. Divided tongues as fire appeared on them and rested on each of them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is important that we understand. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. When we hear about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, what we know as the Old Testament, the, the, the prophets, the patriarchs, the poets of the Old Testament, right? The Pentateuch, right? The first five books and so on. The Old Testament the Holy Spirit is described in the first chapter as, as, as across the chaos that was, the, the Spirit was there, it was the wisdom that God built the universe with, right? And then we, we see that throughout the Proverbs and, and, and on and on throughout. But here's what we see. The Holy Spirit did not rest on anyone except for temporarily and situationally throughout the Old Testament temporarily and situationally. So a prophet, the Holy Spirit would come upon a prophet. He would speak to the king or he would speak to the people. It was temporary and it was situational. So we have to know that, that a shift happens in the universe right here in Acts chapter two. That anyone from this point on who would believe in and follow Jesus would now be filled with the Holy Spirit, the wisdom that God used, the power to bring order to chaos, the power that rose Jesus from the dead is in you who believe in and follow Jesus. I want that to rest upon you for a second. The Holy Spirit fills you. Whew. And began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Here's a manifestation of the Spirit, right? They, they begin to speak in other tongues. Now, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is limitless, but it's always going to point to one thing. And I, and I want to talk about that because it's important that we understand that. Now, uh, my father, I grew up in a house where he had a poetic love for sailing. And I just remember that. He had uh, sailboat models, uh, pictures of sailboats. He even... Uh, tried to build a sailboat in our garage once. He's, he's, I mean, he was, I remember being out there and, and just watching this. We would charter sailboats for vacations sometimes. We chartered a, a sailboat once down in the Gulf of Mexico for a week, and, and my dad didn't know anything about sailing, but he's like, let's just take the whole family and just see what happens, right? Let's go out into the ocean, right? And, and uh, we, I remember chartering as a teenager, he chartered one at, at Smith Mountain Lake, and he was always fascinated with, with sailing and always wanted to someday have his own sailboat. And about two years ago, he bought his first sailboat. I think it was a 30-foot sailboat in Smith Mountain Lake. And man, it was this sailboat from the 1970s, so it had all this character. And, and he went to take a, uh, a class in Annapolis where the Naval Academy is on how to sail. So he got all the terminology. You don't call it a rope, you call it a line. Don't ever call it a rope around someone who sails. They'll throw you off the boat, okay? And you don't call it a sail, you call it a sheet. I didn't know this, okay? So he invites me out about a year ago on the lake, and my son Chase and I, we, we go down there, and we get on the boat, and we're sailing, and he says, hey, you want to take the wheel? And I don't know if that's really what it's called, because I'm sure there's some word besides wheel. That just makes sense to me. Uh, and so I grab it, and he begins to tell me, hey, here's the deal. Uh, you, you cannot think linearly. You have to to think differently. You almost have to think flow, right? Because the wind is blowing and you cannot control it. 
What you have to do, though, is position the boat so that it catches the wind, which means this. If you want to go over there, it's going to take a journey, and it's going to take cooperation with the wind. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody's already got it. Somebody's already got it. He's like, I know where he's going with this. I know where he's going with this. The power, the power that, that moves the boat cannot be controlled. It cannot be manipulated. What it can be, though, is harnessed when we position the sheet, the sail, the boat, in such a way that it powers the craft. How does Jesus describe to Nicodemus the Holy Spirit? He says, it's like wind. It's like wind. You cannot, you cannot even see it. All you can see is the effects of it, right? You can, you can see and you can hear the effects of the wind, uh, but, but you can't harness it yourself and you certainly can't control it. What you can do, though, is move, move with it. Move with it. And that is so critical that we understand is that the power that rose Jesus from the dead cannot be controlled by our flesh. It cannot be manipulated by our flesh, and it will never make much of our flesh. What it can be, though, is if we will position our hearts and our minds and ultimately our actions in such a way, it will point to Jesus. It will point to Jesus. That is what the Holy Spirit is pointing to. Write this down if you're taking notes. The Holy Spirit is the Father's power upon the church to present the Son to the nations. You see how the Trinity works, right? I mean, we could do a whole we could do a whole year, 52 weeks, talking about the Trinity, and we'd all get to the, the 52nd week, and we'd, be, we'd, we'd still go, man, it's still a, still a dang mystery, <laughs> right? And that's what Jesus says about the Spirit. It's mysterious, and you got to be okay with that. There's a lot of black and white in the Scriptures, right? We, we, we know that, but man, there is a lot of mystery, isn't it? There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of black and white in our faith, right? But there's a whole lot more mystery. And so we need a power that's bigger than that. And if we try to think linearly, give me another list, give me another law, make this, dumb this down for me, tell me what I got to do, tell me what I got to eat, tell me how I got to dress, tell me, can I listen to Beyonce or not? Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not going to make a list. The Spirit works in limitless ways, but is always pointing to one person. And it ain't me, and it ain't you. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. How do I know the Spirit is moving in my life or in someone else's life? You will see Jesus. You'll see Jesus. This is it. That's it. So here's the deal. We do two things, and we've got to understand this before we get into how in the world is this Holy Spirit going to transform our family into a church and our church into a family? How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? We? we have to understand something. And I'll tell it to you by talking about the pizza that I ate last night. Yeah, come on. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Seven weeks, I was fasting. At 10.30 last night, I get home, and I made some fries. I started with that. I cut up a potato, two potatoes, actually, and I made some hot fries, put some hot sauce on those fries, and I said, wow. And then I was like, but I'm not done. Right about that time, my family starts coming home, 
my son and his wife, Lauren, they came home. They, they stayed the night with us last night after Revival Week, and we had some other house guests. Of course, you know, my parents lived there, and my sister was visiting, so a, ha- a house full of people. Uh, my son, Chase, and, and his girlfriend, Lily, they're, they're, they come in, and, and I said, who wants pizza? And it was that silent. Because you know you can't order pizza by yourself. Like, it's just like, you can't, because if we're going to order pizza, we're going to order a large. Yes, come on, come on. And you can't just open up a large pizza by yourself. Uh, and, and so I just said, anybody want pizza? And my daughter-in-law, Lauren, says, I'm in. So I said, that's all I need, one person. <laughs> one person, one person. So she gets on the phone. I said, hey, okay, order it. Here's, here's my card. She's talking to Domino's. And we order a large pepperoni and mushroom pizza. Okay, I know I lost some of you on the mushrooms. <laughs> it's fine. That'll be $24. She's like, hey, it's 24 bucks. Like, you still okay with this? I said, 24 bucks. And then I remembered it. That I'm... I, I so married up, right? You guys know what I'm talking about when you go, oh my goodness, my wife always says this. And guys, I say this a lot. Here you go again. Marriage is a man's best friend, okay? And I remember something. My wife says, if you ever call Domino's, always ask, do you have any specials? Some of you, that's all you're gonna get today. You're going to walk out of here. He's like, oh, my goodness. Church was awesome. You always ask. It's the first thing you ask. You don't even, they'll be asking you what your phone number is. Can I have your phone? Nope. Before I give you my phone number and my name, what are your specials today? Always ask what your specials are. So I say to Lauren, hey, ask them what their specials are. She says, uh, do you have any specials today? They say, oh, yeah, you can get a large five topping pizza for 12 bucks. <laughs> what? What? I'm, 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 I could go on about this. <laughs> so you were going to charge me 20, twice for two toppings. But if I just ask you, what are the specials? You're going to cut the price in half and add, you know, three more toppings. Listen, y'all, this is big, this is big. You're saying, what does this have to do with the Holy Spirit? It has so much to do with the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Sometimes we undervalue the work of the Holy Spirit. We don't know what it's worth sometimes. And and, and some of you grew up in faith traditions, in, 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 in churches, it was Father, Son, and Holy Bible, right? You, you, that was the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy, the Holy Spirit was something that we only talk about was like the second cousin that lived in the basement, and we only go see him every, every now and then, uh, but, but we got the Bible, we got the Father, and we got the Son. And listen, the scriptures are important, but the scriptures without the Trinity, right, without the Spirit, are just pages, right? We, we, we have to have both. And a lot of times we undervalue the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's the problem with that. To undervalue the Spirit causes us to try and change people on our own power. On our own power. When we say, um, oh yeah, 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 the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a thing, but, but man. And we open up the Bible if we don't have the spirit of God, that mysterious, you cannot control it. You just get in the flow. You posture your heart and mind. If we, then the scriptures and our lives become weak and powerless. When we, though, approach the scriptures and we approach our life and even our witness with the power of the Holy Spirit, the nations will bow to the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Listen, listen, listen. We cannot undervalue the power of the Holy Spirit. 
We cannot. The Holy Spirit must be invited into. And here's what the Holy Spirit's always gonna do when we open up the Bible, when we speak a witness, when we, are, when we are trying to grow in our faith, the Holy Spirit is always going to point us to Jesus. This is what Jesus looks like when you are reconciling a relationship with your wife. And I'm gonna tell you this, I'm gonna tell you this. The Holy Spirit does so much better work on the human heart than you will. Please don't miss that. Please don't miss that. There are people that you think, if they would just, and you've got a Bible verse for them, and you've got a sermon for them, you've got a song for them, you've got a devotional for them, if they would just, and the reality is, if you would just point them to the Holy Spirit, Right? If you and I would just get stupid things out of the way so that they have opportunity to allow the Holy Spirit to consult them, to woo them, to clarify for them, to press them, to coach them to what is. Listen, the best thing I learned as a husband is the Holy Spirit will change my wife so much better than my arguments. Because when we, when we start having those conversations, man, I have this lawyer in me, exhibit A, Tammy, exhibit A, and B, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my wife is crazy, you know it, she knows it, because I have evidence here and I have some witnesses coming in, here's, you can't handle the truth. It, he, man, it's all happening. And the more I do that, the more my wife's heart starts to close. I, I'm gonna tell you this. I have never transformed my house, my children or my wife by a great argument that I've made. Never. I've made them cry, right, Chase? Oh, yeah. Right? Dad, this was such a great argument. You made me feel so bad about myself (laughs) that I can't help but change. You're so right. Right? Nope. Nope, nope. But here's what happens. When 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 I leave room, when I get stupid things out of weight, which is usually me, Right, and I just say, "Hey, babe, look. It looks like, it looks like we're kind of going in circles here." And I'm sorry because I just keep making this argument, and it's 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 not helpful. So why don't we just take 15 minutes? You go pray. I'll go pray, and let's just get back together in 15 minutes and see what happens. You know what the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit ministers to her. Tammy, your husband is a strong competent man (laughs) he loves you you know he loves you you know he's right (laughs) right okay that's not what he says but what he says to me in those times is he says why don't you just let me do the work here and you just get to repenting and confessing and owning your stuff We come back together 15 minutes. Hey, listen, I just, I just want you to know I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, and she starts crying. She says, I love you. I forgive you, right? And the Holy Spirit takes, takes it from there, right? And the same thing with my children and the same thing when people come to me for counsel, right? Because I, I can get on the board, right? But oftentimes, it's just like, man, what's what's the Holy Spirit saying to you? I don't know. I've never thought about it. Well, let's just pray right now. We undervalue the work of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, though, we overexpand the work of the Holy Spirit. And here's what I want to explain this. I want to explain this. Uh, Instead of chasing after Jesus as the hero, we 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 can do something else. We can chase after the Holy Spirit's power to make us the hero, Right? What, what is it that people said to, to the apostles, uh, in fact, the apostle Paul, hey, how, how do I get that power that you have? 
right? I, I see that you walk into and, and people are healed and you speak with such authority. How do I get that power, right? And, and the apostle Paul and the other apostles who had those conversations with people had to always say, hold up, hold up. It's Jesus, Jesus. You start with Jesus. You see, the Holy Spirit is always going to make Jesus the hero. And we see that over and over. Paul would show up. Uh, yeah, darkness would flee. People would be healed. Mirac- miraculous signs and wonder. And, and some people want to make Paul, you know, make much of Paul. And Paul would always, and the, and the other disciples would always say, no, 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 no. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. Silver and gold I have none. But in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. It's Jesus. The Holy Spirit, whether he is manifesting through a spiritual gift, whether he's manifesting through us being obedient to follow his instructions, the wind and where he is blowing the the craft of our heart, it's always going to be about making Jesus the hero, making him famous in our life. If it's ever about us being famous, having attention, or trying to conjure up an experience for ourselves to feel a certain thing. And some of you grew up in this, in, 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 a, in a church tradition where you're like, is Jesus here? Is Jesus here? Because man, we're chasing something. And we're running around the place. And we have words for each other. And we're, and, and we're, and, and you know, we're, we're having this experience and it's kind of fun and it's kind of, but who at the end of the day is famous? Is it me? Is it a person? Is it a preacher? Or at the end of the day, is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the hero? Because that's what the Holy Spirit is always pointing us to. Look at Jesus. Yeah, but Holy Spirit, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. The problem, to overexpand the Holy Spirit causes us to seek experiences and attention rather than follow Jesus. So the bottom line is this. Our church and families must invite the Holy Spirit's power to transform others. We have to let the Holy Spirit do the heavy lifting. What is our role? Get stupid stuff out of the way. And what is that? Religion, our flesh, our preferences, things that we do to manipulate and convince people in our own giftings and our own flesh. Get that out of the way and let the Holy Spirit do the work. And so what do we do? We let the Holy Spirit work in us and show us the love of Jesus, the leadership of Jesus. And I promise you this, when we are kind and we are patient and we are joyful and we are obedient to the Holy Spirit, oh my, what begins to happen is there begins to be a clear path for somebody to all of a sudden go, what is it about you that makes you so patient when I am so obstinate to you sometimes? Why is it that you don't get triggered? Why is it that you always speak so kindly to that person when they are so terrible to you? Jesus. Jesus. So how? How do we do this? John chapter 14. I want to do this quickly. Jesus is having his uh, conversation with his disciples. It's the last meal that he has with them before he is arrested and crucified. We call it the Last Supper. He starts to unpack for them what he is going to do to make them the church, the forthcoming church. Verse 14, I'm sorry, verse 15. He says, if you love me, if you love me, If you love me, keep my commands. Keep my commands. This is big, and I and I could man, I could unpack this for hours, but I'm I'm just going to give you this real quick. What does Jesus do? How he he says, "Here's how you love me. 
you obey my commands. What are his commands? He speaks and he, and he, and he teaches the Sermon on the Mount and he, t- and he teaches and he preaches in parables and, and we have the four gospels and, and, and we have the, the book of Acts and we have Revelation. Okay, so narrow, what does he narrow it down? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And here's how you will do this the best, the most regular every day. How? How? Tell me. Please tell me. Tell me. Okay, here's how you're going to do it. You're going to actually love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, th- really? That, that's, that's it? You mean my relationship with God and loving him with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength is really about how I love my neighbor. Yep, that's, that's, if you want me to boil it down, that's it. The way that you love other people is ultimately the way that you love God. If you love me, if you love me, then you will spend the rest of your life getting over you and loving people sacrificially the way I have loved you to the point at which I would wash your feet and die for you. That's what you signed up for when you decided to believe in and follow Jesus. When you went to believer's baptism, and you said to your spiritual community, I'm all out, I'm all in for Jesus. What you and I said is, I'm gonna follow him. I'm gonna give him my mind. I'm gonna give him my thoughts, what I put into my mind. If anything is keeping me from having thoughts of love and self-sacrifice and, and, and kindness and, and joy, I'm, I'm just not even gonna entertain it anymore right? And it begins to become our life. Now, what is the power to do that? Verse 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. You and I cannot love our neighbor on good intentions, We cannot love our neighbor the way Jesus says we should love our neighbor on willpower. You and I just don't have it. Even if we can fake it outwardly, something's going on with us inwardly and we begin to resent them and we begin to have bitterness towards them. As outwardly we are going, I love you in the name of Jesus. Inwardly, I can't stand you I wish you would hold your breath until you pass out. Some of you had that conversation in the lobby. Can't do it on your flesh. The world cannot accept it or accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. Listen, until people open themselves up, their mind and their heart to hear the Holy Spirit, you can can give them all the books, you can send them all the sermons, You can give them all the arguments, but until they break. And and, and I talked to a young man right after the first service, and he just says, I can't do this on my own anymore. Boom. That's it. That's it. That's it. What am I supposed to do? And, And this is what I said to him. You just did it. You just did it. The moment that you and I say, I in my competencies, and my pride, in my strength, in my intelligence or whatever, I have tried to do something with this life and I keep busting up relationships, I keep busting up opportunities, and even the ones that I seize and, and seem successful at the end of the day are empty and here I am and I'm delusional and I'm disillusioned and I'm broken I need something, Jesus, Holy Spirit. That's when you start to see the kingdom of God. And until somebody's there in their own variation of that, they cannot see the kingdom of God. And Jesus says it right here. They cannot see it until they're broken. And in their form of brokenness, it may be different for you, they cannot see the kingdom of God. He says it over and over and over. He says, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you. He was talking to his disciples right there, but he's talking to us in the room. He's like, hey, you you know 
The Holy Spirit. Well, how do I know the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit's the one that told you that day you couldn't do it anymore on your own. Do you remember that day? You remember that day when you crossed the threshold of faith? And maybe it was in a campfire. Maybe it was in a church service. Maybe it was across the table with a friend. Maybe it was your, your dad at the, at the dinner table one night after everybody went off and, and, and he sat down with you and he explained to you, uh, like you, 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 know, you were 10, maybe 15 years old. I don't know what it was. But you remember that day where you just said, I'm a sinner and I'm broken and I need help and I can't do it on my own. And nobody but Jesus can do it for me. Jesus says, that right there, right there, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. And you collaborated with him in the most important decision in your life. And guess what? For the rest of your life, he wants to be the wind. He wants to be the fire. He, he wants to guide you and me into deeper places. The Holy Spirit gives us the faith to believe the Father was in Jesus and is now in us too. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to invite the Holy Spirit to build greater faith in you and your family. I want to end with this. All this I have spoken while with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. Who will teach you all things? The Holy Spirit will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said. So what happens if I forget? The Holy Spirit will remind you. What happens if I get all up all, all in my feelings and and I get all anxious, and I go through a pandemic, and the Holy Spirit, he'll, he'll take you back to that day. The Holy Spirit, he'll take you back, he'll take you back to that, that passage in Scripture. He'll take you back to that experience. He'll take you back to that moment. He'll take you back to, and he'll cultivate the disciplines and, and, and connect the dots. And, and, and ultimately, who's he gonna point to? He's not gonna point to you. He's gonna point to Jesus. He's going to remind you. He's going to teach you all things, and he's going to remind you. And here's what I love about this, because, man, do we not need this right now? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The world doesn't give you peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. The Holy Spirit transforms our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions to what? into Jesus. Jesus walked the face of this earth as the illustration of the Father, as the invitation of the Father into an eternal family. And he says, I'm giving you that. I'm giving you that. It's in you. It's in you. Every time you open the Word, the Holy Spirit wants to show you who I am, where I am, and what I'm up to. Every time you walk into a room, the Holy Spirit wants to point to Jesus in you and around you. Stand with me, would you? So, first service, we come to the very end while we're singing a song. The Holy Spirit says to me, I want you to share the dream that you had last night. So we're singing a song, and I was like, oh, I don't want to share this. But I did, and I'm going to share it with you. Now, some of you, I know what some of you are thinking. John, you had a dream last night because you ate pizza. Yep, yep. And I understand that. I get that. But, but here's the thing. Just, just, I'm going to let the Holy Spirit work on you. So last night, I went to bed and I had this very vivid dream of that there was a, a German shepherd living in my garage, unbeknownst to me. I didn't know this German shepherd was living in my garage. I go out into my garage and there is this malnourished German shepherd. He like hasn't eaten in, in a long time. You can see this, I mean, this once beautiful animal that 
Ito is a, is a work, a working friend for mankind, right? He's a shepherd and he's a guardian. And there he is weak, he can barely get up and you can see his ribs. And so I walk into the garage and I see this, this animal laying there, this, this once beautiful dog, very mighty, is now just feeble, can barely get up. And I, I get down on the garage floor and I sort of get around this German shepherd. And I notice something that the German shepherd has water, but inside the water bowl is, are all these bugs and these insects and all this like debris. And so I, can, I, I start to, to empty out the water. And I don't know if I was talking to the dog or not, or if it was just in my thoughts. I was just, I was trying to comfort the dog and let, let the dog know, hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get you some water so that you can drink water. And then I woke up. And so I shared this in the first service. And this was the very end. I mean, the last few seconds of the, of the first service. And I said, hey, I'm going to share this with you. Here you go. Somebody has to interpret it. And two people stepped up. So Danielle, who's our experience director, came up here. She's like, look, this is not me. And she, she said, this is what I, she says, I believe the German shepherds. She, she, she said, I, I have had dreams about German shepherds. And she says, it's always the Holy Spirit. And she says, I believe that the Holy Spirit has been neglected has been neglected and and that our church needs to no longer neglect the holy spirit that we need to drink from the living water and we need we need to nurture the holy spirit in our, in our in our family and in our church and i ask i ask the first of do we receive that do we receive that and I want to say, do we receive that? Do we receive that we are? Uh, and listen, this, everybody's got their story. Some of you, some of you know, no, you said, no, no, I've never undervalued the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is just, I get that, I understand it. And maybe we just need, we need to, to see what it looks like to walk humbly in that and to, and to point to Jesus in that. And, 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 but for some of you, you, you may have grown up in, 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 in a church tradition or no church at all. And, and I just want to say to you, just open yourself up to letting the Holy Spirit bring wind and fire to your faith and your example in Jesus Christ. But somebody else stood up and his name was Brad, Brad Hopright. Many of you know who Brad is. Brad's been a part of this church. He's, he's been on our elder board at one time. Uh, he's uh, led various things. He's volunteered in Way Kids. And he had a tear in his eye and he, and you could tell this is not something He's not, neither one of these people are spotlight people. And they, and they just, and, and Dr. Brads came up and he just said, he says, I, I affirm what Danielle said. He says, but I think God is making it even more specific for you. And he points to me. He says, I, I, he says, he says, I feel like this German shepherd represents the role of men in our church be shepherds and to be guardians and for many seasons they've been starving themselves and they've been drinking from things that they shouldn't be drinking from and so they've been weakened and he said I believe you are to in this next season of your life call the men of this church to a new level of humility and to a new level of shepherding and to a new level of guardianship. And so I said, I received that. And so we're going to do that right now. And I'm going to ask the men, if you don't want to, that's okay. That's okay. But if you want to step in uh, if you're a young man an old man if you're 15 or 85 and you know that God has called you to be a guardian and a shepherd of this church and of, our, of your home I just want you to come on down here just come on down here yep come on come on just come on down here yep we're gonna we're gonna 
We're going to make this a moment. Remember, moments move us. January the 30th, 2022 is a moment. It's a moment. Just come on down here. If you are a husband, a father, or you intend to be a husband and father someday, then I want you to come down here. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. Just get to your knee right now, and and we're going to take a posture of surrender and prayer. And just put your hand. Yeah, put your hand on one of these men's shoulders. And let him, just let him place his hand on you right now. If you're out there, and for whatever reason you just say, hey, this isn't my thing, that's okay, that's okay. But, but you just go, hey, I'm going to identify with what's going on there. If you feel comfortable, just lift your hand out as a way of just saying, I'm going to pray for this man right now. And I want to acknowledge something. I want to acknowledge something. We live in a culture right now that's very, there's a lack of support right now. Let's just be honest. There's a lack of support in what your role is in the family, in the church, and in the greater community. But here's the thing, here's the thing. When you let the power of the Holy Spirit come in, right, and transform your heart, and I I let the power of the Holy Spirit come in and transform my heart and my mind and shift me away from my flesh and away from my corrupt desires, my selfish ambitions, my path of pride and fear and laziness. Listen, listen, listen. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Revival will take place. And here's where it's going to start. It's going to start right here on your knees with you. And, 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 and here's what you can do. You can know that there is no sin that you've committed. There's no stronghold that you've allowed that can't right now in the name of Jesus break off of you and be left here. Right here. We live in a, in a time where pornography has wanted to chain us men, where lust, alcoholism, self-destruction, distractions, isolation, and that is the poison of the enemy. And you can see the ribs around your soul. I want to say this to you right now. Jesus died on a cross and rose from the dead so that you could live as royalty, royalty, and run free and bring the kingdom of God right here and right now. And in the name of Jesus, we leave these things. We leave the strongholds and the idols of our fathers. Even good men who love Jesus had their own idols. And right now, you can just leave them right here and say, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to let materialism. I'm not going to let control. I'm not going to let pride. I'm not going to let addiction. I'm not going to let self-worship travel another generation. Right now, I leave it here. And you just pray for the man beside you and let him pray for you. Right? Let, let, and listen, listen. If this church, if this church is going to have a ripple effect, not only in this community, but I believe in a generation. It is going to have to be shepherded and guarded by a generation of men who are willing to stand up, who are willing to take up their cross, follow after Jesus, put it all on the line all over again, wash the feet of the vulnerable, stand up in a generation and say, that we, we will bring the kingdom of God and it will be first in us, it'll be in our families, it'll be in our church, and we will stand for it and we will stand humbly and we will relinquish our pride and our fear and our laziness as times change. We will not relent. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray this over my brothers. I pray this over me. 
Lord, that we would be the chief repentance officer of our home. I pray that there are men right now who just need to, to, go, to go face people in their homes, maybe even an ex-spouse, maybe some children, maybe even some grandchildren. Give them the strength to do that. Let them be okay crying and weeping and find strength in that. Let them see that there is strength in weakness, the weakness of a humble man who stands in strength. Father, I even think about the image of a German shepherd who's dangerous to the wolves but is comforting to the sheep. Oh, come on. You are dangerous, man, to the enemy of your house. When you step up and you drink from the living water instead of the poisonous water, you are dangerous and Demons will tremble and flee from your house. But you are comforting to the sheep who need your loving, patient guidance. I pray this over you. I pray this over me right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, here's what I want us to do, man. I want us to stand up right now. I want you to lead the way right now. I want you to lead the way. And I know this isn't comfortable for some of you. I want you to lead the way in worship. I'm telling you what, when a man worships the Lord, when he, when he cries out to God in a posture of surrender, everyone in the house follows the lead. Follows the lead. And listen, I know some of you men for the last season of your life have worshiped the Lord like this. And, and, and maybe it's because you haven't felt worthy. Maybe it's because there's just been secrets in your life. Maybe it's just there's still blame and shame. Or, or maybe you just have never felt like, man, I could just be free to, to, to worship the Lord. I, I want you to do it however you're comfortable. But, but, but maybe, just maybe, it, you're going to lead the way in, in this church in showing people what it means to take a posture of surrender and to look to a holy God and say, you're worthy. And I tremble, but I also trust. I tremble. I don't want your favor to go away from me. And so I will align my heart and my life to the commands of Jesus. And I trust your Holy Spirit to guide me in grace. So I want us to sing right now and model for this church what it means to be a guardian and a shepherd, a priest and a pastor, and to worship the Lord. Let's lift our voices. Listen, you're going to hear this baritone bass take over this church right now. And I want us I want us to see what happens when a generation of men take their place in this church. Come on y'all, let's sing this. Let's sing this together. Come on. Let's sing it together. Let's sing it together. <laughs> 